Let's head over. Look, Mario Cristobal has some stuff to prove, right? Whether people, and I don't think that's even a hot take, really. I mean, this is a guy that is recruited at a high level. He has the talent in the building. He's shown time and time again that he is not a great in-game head coach. And what better year to prove it than with your most talented team? Or sorry, what better year, what better time to prove that you can be a good head coach in game than this year when you have a very, very talented team in this Miami at at almost every position. You're gonna be talented. Uh, or as talented as anyone else you're going to play on your schedule. I think things are looking up for Mario Cristobal's Miami Hurricanes. And, you know, <laughs> it's crazy because fading Jeff Brom, like I did in just that last team that we previewed, and then betting on Mario Cristobal has <laughs> never made anyone money ever. All right. But, the year's 2024, and there's confidence realignment, and there's talent on this Miami football team. Listen, I think they're going to be favored in just about every game that they play in, including Florida State Week 9 there. I think by the time we get to there, I think Florida State could have a couple losses. I think Miami could damn well be undefeated and pretty highly ranked as well. There's, I mean, let's just get into it, right? Cam Ward, he is a stud. He is a star. He's the sole reason – not so reason. One of many reasons why I took Washington State's over last year and it didn't work. And I get that. I know a lot it of should people have though. Like, it absolutely well, should have. Do you remember? And speaking of you know ups and downs, <laughs> it is Miami with with with. He was so good. He is so good, and he is showing on camp. He is everything they wanted him to be. No surprise there. How excited that they were to get him. Kind of at the eleventh hour, where he's entered the portal. He entered the draft, and he came out of the draft, and he was at Miami, and then it was a huge, huge deal. After he missed on, was it Will Howard and DJ U and all eyes up? It's like, well, is it going to be Emory Williams? Is he healthy even? And and now it's Cam Ward, and now you feel really, really good. And then it's like, well, okay, well, we got Cam Ward. Let's go get Sam Brown, and let's go get. Damian Martinez, and let's make sure our secondary is Just good. And luxury let's... gets all of these. Yeah, it, it is it is impressive, but but I am so pumped about Cam Ward. Damn it, man! What he did with uh, Josh Kelly can be so excited to what he can do with the talent in this receiving room, especially as Avery Rochelle. Yeah. Uh, now here's the thing. Here's the thing. Emory Williams, not a great back quarterback. I don't know that Poff and Barger or whatever the heck his name is, a guy that I've never seen play football ever in my entire life. I don't know if those guys are effective back to quarterbacks, right? Dude, I'll say this about Albany. They had a ton of power five <laughs> transfers. Damn near every conference we've done, and this is our fourth, I guess. They, this is the last of the power four, but – They've had a ton of guys go, and, and he was at Old Dominion before, so so I guess he's got some kind of experience. But listen, he was second team, you know, Walt, second team quarterback. He was Walter Payton finalist. Listen, they, they, they brought him in, and that's a solid backup. We'll see how it goes, but it's nice not to have to rely upon him, you know, at down to down for right now. Obviously, if Cam Ward gets hurt, the outlook on this team dramatically shifts. It does because that's how high upside he is now. Okay. And I have to be the one to do it, unfortunately, but there is some downside with Cam Ward. You see it happen where he does make, you know, some certain plays, some certain throws where it's like, what are you doing there? Why are you taking a sack Throw the ball away? And it's frustrating, but you take the good with the bad because it is so much good when he can do an elevated team. And we'll see how he does with a team that, has never been as talented as he has had around him and an offensive line that has never been as good as he has had around him. So it should be fun. I do think Shannon Dawson, he got a lot of hate last year for TVD. I think he's good. I think he's a good coordinator. And I, I think uh, it'd be interesting to see what he can do with Cam Ward. But you mentioned it. The pressure is on this coaching staff because the talent is there at every position. 
Yeah, I think I was a year early on Cam Ward because when he transferred to Washington State originally and moved with Eric Morris, I was like, give me the over on Washington State. Five and a half, it was like plus 145. I'm like, what do we... now? There were other reasons aside from just that, but I thought that that was a really uh, key component in why I was making that bet. And then they just had like the best defense that Washington State's ever had in like the last like 20 years. And I'm like, okay, well, so I won that bet, but not for the reason that I necessarily thought it would be, <laughs> you know? And then the next year, I was like, all right, I'm going to be cautious about Cam Ward. So I stayed away from the over. And then you hit the over on Cam Ward, and he totally was awesome. And we were talking about his Heisman, you know, thing four weeks in the season. Mm -hmm. And then it just totally fell apart. But I just thought that was just funny, just to give people a little historical background of the show and uh, CD and I. The, the running back room, spectacular. Damian Martinez. That's me pounding the table and moving my camera accidentally because I'm pounding the table for Damian Martinez because he's a fantastic running back. And I said this last year, uh, that was my hot take that he was going to lead the country in rushing last year. That didn't happen. But he was a dang good football player last year. All right. He was really, really effective for Oregon State. Draft him just about every college fantasy football draft I had. Draft him in Christopher and I's fantasy football draft that we do every year. He was fantastic for Oregon State. He's a hard runner, uh, gets those yards, but also elusive. So good. And you know what? Yeah, he's fantastic. But Mark Fletcher is also so good, too, as a compliment. I think they complement each other so well in this running back room. It's not mentioned, that's not to mention the other really talented pieces that they also have in this running back room. They maybe don't have as many snaps as some of these guys above, um, but, but it's still – Pretty solid in the rest of this room as well. Yeah, AJ Allen is a guy that flashes a true freshman at Nebraska. And he comes to Miami and just doesn't quite put it together. Last year, I think it was kind of banged up a little bit. Chris Johnson Jr., he's there as well. Holy cow. And then a couple of true freshmen that are talented. Listen, but it starts and ends with those top two guys. Uh, there's a big drop off because of the how elite those guys are. Those guys are elite running backs in college football. And it's interesting because you're seeing programs at the top half of college, okay, at the, the top, top of college football who have just silly money to throw around. They're building elite duos at their running back position. It's kind of interesting. And you look at Ohio State there, you, I mean, Penn State's doing that. To, uh, they, they did that to the, they did that to their own thing. Georgia kind of brought in ETN when they didn't really need him to. So it's, it's interesting because Martinez is, you mentioned the luxury. He kind of was because Mark Fletcher was going to be the bell cow this year. And then all of a sudden, was, well, we'll get Martinez and we'll have Fletcher kind of split cares with him as well as a 1A, 1B type guy. And it's, I think it's good for both. I think it's good for the offense and it's good for Cam Ward. Honestly, I think it gives you an excuse to run the football because you have two elite running backs who are going to be fresh. And sometimes you can get caught just throwing the football around the yard with Cam Ward, and that's awesome. And you hit take the football out of his hands, but why not if you can give it to Martinez and Fletcher? Great. Well, let's talk about who Cam Ward's going to be throwing it to as well. Xavier Restrepo is so good. All right. He is so good. I know he's like a slot receiver, and he, there's not a ton of elite slot receivers in college football uh, these days, but Xavier Restrepo is one of them. It, 119 targets, 85 receptions, 1,100 yards, six touchdowns. He was nuts in just about every game that he played. No matter who was playing quarterback, he was always dependable. Yeah. He's a great route runner. He's in the right spots. Redshirt senior, experienced veteran leader. I mean, just checks every single box that you could possibly think of for Xavier Restrepo. And then the other pieces around him are also pretty solid. Jacoby George, that's a guy that I like that had 800 yards last year. Samuel Brown. Sam Brown. Coming over there from Houston. Fantastic talent, by the way. Great get. Now, you people want to talk about Matt Golden, um, you know, being the get uh, from Houston, but but Samuel Brown, Sam Brown was fantastic for them last year as well. So I'm a, uh, I'm very high on that top three. He was another guy in that spring portal window. I think they brought him in just, you know. Again, not necessarily, but again, really nice to have. Uh, and he's going to be a nice compliment in that room. Uh, Isaiah Horton's a guy comes in 6'4", 205. 
He's been having a good camp as a young kid. This year three sounds like he's taking those next step that he needed to take. And let's let that big arm air out Cam Ward. And you, you run under that six, four, two Oh five, good speed with Horton and just let him go stretch the field vertically, which maybe you don't quite have in Rochefro and Brown, what you got in, in, in Horton, which is really, really nice. Um, Ray Ray Joseph is also there as a young kid. You got Trader and Nicar, a couple of young guys, Robbie Washington. Uh, Chance Robinson's another talented kid, too. I don't expect many of those guys to really be contributing this year. Uh, it's mostly going to be probably those top four guys and a couple of tight ends. Man, and this tight end room is pretty exciting. I mean, Cam McCormick is back for nine college football season, which is crazy. But again, it's nice having a guy in his mid to upper 20s be on your roster so he can block and he could be a leader. And, he, and he's had nine years in a goddamn college weight room. I know he's battled injuries and all that stuff, but it's kind of funny to see. And, and you know, the Cam McCormick jokes will finally end next year. Um, but again, it's nice to remind me to have him. And then Riley Williams at 6'6", 240. And Elijah Arrow. And then Elijah Lofton. And Jackson Carver's in there, too. There's a lot of good weapons for Cam Ward to have. Um, those guys are having good camps, too. And they're showing out. And that's good to see, you know, the full arsenal of this offensive weapon really, really take place. Yeah, and just ditto everything you said about that tight end room. I'm not going to go repeat everything i want to move over to the offensive line because uh i'm looking at my my numbers my notes and dude dog possible dude possible dude dog that's how i'm going about this i think you got five guys that you really like on this offensive line and yeah you lose matt lee that is a huge loss matt lee was a guy that you know, we talked about NFL draft season being in extremely underrated. And when they got him from UCF a couple years back, that was a really good get. Um, he's off to the NFL, doing NFL things, whatever. Uh, Ryan Rodriguez comes over there at center. He played some meaningful snaps last year. I, I mean, over 100 snaps, he looked great in all of them. I, I'm confident the staff's confident in him. Um, and there's Cooper. Is he going to be the one that's playing guard for them probably? I mean, look, Javion Cohen was fine. I think he was a little overrated his entire collegiate career. Uh, I say good riddance. I say, I say bring in Cooper, you know, Louis Cristobal. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who's going to play that guard spot. My guess would be in his Cooper or I don't know, Zach Carpenter. Is he fighting for a guard spot? What, what's the, I think Carpenter gives you good flexibility uh, to play center and guard. I think he's more fighting for that center spot with Rodriguez. Although I think Rodriguez is probably going to win that. Like you said, Samson Okunlola, man, former five-star kid, recruited as a tackle. He's going to play guard because you've got two really good tackles in Francis Noah and Jalen Rivers. And Okunlola's got the ability to do that and slide inside. Damn it, man. That's a really nice piece to have. And you're talking about big, impressive, physical, talented offensive line with a lot of experience underrated, even though you've got a couple of, you know, Year three, year two, year right, guys. But that's what snaps a lot of snaps. And by the way, if there's one position I do trust Crystal Ball to coach up, and I do expect to have it's going to be offensive line. And again, keeping Cam Ward upright because we talked about the quarterback depth, but also buying him time. And what he does so well is extend plays and just throw the football on just ropes on the sidelines and, and what he can do that if they're, they're holding up under center can wait for plays to develop and then really get exciting uh, with Shannon Dawson. Moving over to the defensive side of the football. I mean, the defensive line. I mean, it, this could be a pretty smelly group, especially in the pass rushing department. When I look at some of these guys that they're going to be throwing out there at edge, I'm looking at Reuben Bain Jr., who was phenomenal last year as a true freshman, nine sacks. Uh, he was unbelievable. Elijah Alston comes over there from Marshall. He's a guy really stinking good at getting to the quarterback. All right, five sacks over there at Marshall. Um, 
all Sun Belt type level player, guy who was highly sought after in the portal. Do not be fooled by the fact that he went to Marshall. Elijah Alston is a severe, will be a, a significant contributor to this defensive uh, front. Tyler Barron coming over there from Tennessee had six sacks of his own. Now, you know, playing opposite of James Pierce, you know, definitely helps with that department. But you're going to be playing opposite Ruben Bain. <laughs> yeah, but, exactly. So, like, this edge group is pretty stupid, if you ask me. Uh, you're, you're just looking at stuff that's so good. And C.J. Clark, just just for gigs, just for giggles, you get C.J. Clark in the portal from North Carolina State, who was a very valuable piece, a very valuable one tech in that defense over there for Dave Dorn. Ridiculous. Yeah. Filthy rich in the transfer portal. Not just like guys, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, this is a need. And it was a need for Miami to some degree. Absolutely. But you didn't just get guys who were good. You got guys who were great and guys who were very proven at their respective positions and guys that are going to have immediate impacts on this defense. Um, Getting pass rushers in the transfer portal, like at this level, is pretty rare. Getting an interior player like CJ Clark in the portal is rare. A plus job by the staff acquiring these defensive line transfers. A plus. Well, I'll throw a couple more names out there. How about Simeon Barrow, a guy that was a captain and damn good for Michigan State in the interior as well. And you want to talk about recruiting portal well at the defensive line. How about recruiting the high school ranks? Let's talk about Marquise Lightfoot. Let's talk about Booker Pickett. Let's talk about Justin Scott. How about Armando Blunt? How about a bunch of blue chip defensive linemen for you? And the development of Akeem Mesidor, a guy that sounds like he's having a really good camp. He's healthy at 6'3", 280. I mean, oh my goodness. Embarrassment of riches. It is a really, really good group. It probably, if you ask me, it probably rivals Clemson. And I just think the upside is so there with what they can do. And we didn't even talk about Ruben Bain much. He is an incredible, first of all, incredible human being, but also an incredible defensive lineman, defensive end, edge rusher, whatever you want to call him for Miami as a true freshman. And he is a dog. He is a workhorse, a grinder. I am, I have really high expectations for what he can be. I'm thinking like Will Anderson type, although I don't want to put those expectations on him, but that's to me, that's who he reminds me of when I watch him play. Yeah, it's not crazy at all. Uh, this linebacker group kind of headlined by Francisco Maui Goa. What a good portal get for them last year, by the way. Obviously, a uh, brother of offensive linemen and Really good football player, Francis Maligo, who we, you know, scraped over when we were talking about the offensive line. Um, good group. I'm going to say not a great group. Uh, I think Jalen Alderman is a guy who had plenty of snaps at Louisville. We didn't even, I guess, talk about his departure there when we were just talking about Louisville just a little bit ago. But um, Alderman isn't – I don't think he's elite. I think he's a fine linebacker. I think this linebacker group is solid, but it's also going to be given a huge bump because that defensive line is pretty nasty. So I'm yep. I'm okay with having plus guys at linebacker as long as you have plus plus guys on that defensive line. And, and now this is a this is one of those teams where we're grading them on a slightly different scale because I mean look, when I look at their national championship odds, I mean they're right there in the mix with you know, A&M Missouri, Tennessee, Michigan, which, you know, some of you, that sounds pretty crazy, but like those are conference championship, you know, competing teams, like playoff potentially competing teams. Michigan, damn it. <laughs> Michigan won it all last year. Yeah. I mean, if, if Alex Orgy puts together, like, watch out for them. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. When I look at, you can get them at plus 6,600 to win the national championship in some places. You know, people, I'm not going to advise anyone to take that. I don't think I'm going to be taking that. But this is the level of team that we're kind of talking about here. Like, this is a very, very, very good football team. It just so happens that their linebacker group 
It's not my favorite, but it's fine because of that defensive line being really good. I'm with you there too. I'm with it. And you can if, if yeah, if you're kind of dominant everywhere else, plus you're playing a four two five, so it's not like you have a ton of linebackers on the field at once. You just kind of gotta have some athletes there that can be in the right spots. That secondary though is one's inter- that is interesting because you bring in a couple transfers and you know you, you, you feel pretty good about them. Most notably the Yanni Hill, another Marshall guy. That's a cornerback and, and the early signs are pretty high on him. And listen, that's that is nice because I was a little bit concerned at corner and more so in the secondary in general, but more so at corner than it was anywhere else. And you got him and Porter and Richard and Kelly and how about Frederick Jr.? He's a guy. Um, Roman is Frederick Jr. He's a guy that sounds like he's having a good camp so far and uh, could be a real game changer for you, maybe in the future, but also potentially in 2024. If there was one unit where I would point to and be like, this is not a unit of a national championship team on this team, it's probably this group. I think Elijah Alston's skills transfer differently than Deani Hill's uh, skills at corner. I, I think it's a much harder transition to play cornerback at a power five level uh, after, I don't know. I I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I've seen a lot of success stories of really successful pass rushers at the G5 level come up and be also effective pass rushers at the power five level. Um, sometimes I feel like corner is a very tough position as you go up in the levels, right? I uh, Can I propose something? That might be crazy. I... I know you lose two NFL safeties, all right? James Williams, Cameron <laughs> Kitchens. Kitchen. They're not upgrading there by any means. But, like, I think they had more NFL bodies than really NFL – I won't say film because I did put out some really good film, but – Consistency. Cons- Thank you. That was exactly the right word. I think they had NFL bodies and some NFL film, but I don't think that they had the consistency at times. There were certain games where they just got torched, like, and they were just not in the right positions. And for some reason, that's happened consistently in Miami secondary these last couple of years, despite having ridiculous pieces in the secondary go to the NFL and have immense success you know i'm thinking of tyreek stevenson's i'm, I'm thinking of james williams and uh, i'm thinking of a uh, there was a corner uh, a couple years ago or a pair of corners a couple years ago that went in, in the nfl draft as well i just think of all these guys and i i never understood why their secondaries were always you know lackluster is that the right word you know underwhelming might be a better word so i'm a little bit cautious about the secondary but i also want to emphasize i don't know people are going to absolutely rail me for that i already know that i already know the comments are going to like rail me for that but i do think james williams and cam kitchens were good players good players i think there was some nfl projection that i think you know media members kind of put on them and therefore kind of just immediately assumed that they're like tyler owens is a guy from texas tech that i kind of think about in the same way but I think people are a little bit more aware of the terrible film that Tyler Owens has out there, but of the immense tools that he had at Texas Tech. I think Kitchens and James Williams don't fall in that same category as Tyler Owens. I just think that they had, like I said, I'll say it again, NFL bodies, pretty good film, not as consistent as maybe many people thought. I don't know. Might be the hottest take of all time, but... Well, listen, they they took one look at James Williams and they made him do a linebacker. So I don't think you're crazy at all. And uh, you bring in a guy like Isaiah Taylor. How about Jaden Harris, who's coming in and having a great camp, who might have won his starting job, uh, can really cover, I think, a little bit better than Kitchens and Williams could. And that was sometimes yes. where you felt a little bit slow at times at safety. They were really good tacklers. Those guys had, you know, 130 tackles. But, yeah. On an eight out of 40 tackles, but at at times I felt like they're just half a second slow, and they're like, 
making these touchdown saving tackles, but you know, maybe if they're just a half a second quicker, they're breaking out the pass or whatever it may be. So and I'm with you here. I we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But Michelle Powell, really good from Washington. That was a big time get. Gonna play the nickel, maybe some safety as well. But he's six one, two ten. Um, talk about consistency and positional versatility. That that's him right there. He can do it all for you back there. Be a leader in your group. Uh, trying to me- mesh together some new faces and some new pieces. Yeah, absolutely. Looking at the schedule, okay. I project Miami to be a really good football team this year. Okay. When we look at their schedule, I think going to Florida week one is really tough. Reminder, by the way, though, they could still lose that game and win the ACC, I think. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Flashback to two years ago. There's a week one matchup in Gainesville, you know, against a Florida team that underwhelmed a little bit. Utah traveled over there to Gainesville. Yep. They lose to Florida in Gainesville, and then they ended up winning the Pac-12. Right, Just because you lose in Gainesville week one does not mean you're a bad football team at all. And I can't wait for the market to overreact and just pound Miami in some games down the road. They play Florida week one at home – or sorry, on the road – Florida A&M at home week two, Ball State at home week three, South Florida on the road at week four, Virginia Tech at home week five, Cal on the road week six, week seven's a bye, week eight you get Louisville on the road, Florida State at home week nine, Duke week 10 at home, Georgia Tech on the road week 11, you get a bye, then Wake Forest, then Syracuse to end the season on the road. Um, So you're telling me they're – Two toughest conference games this year are at both at home. Their win total is at nine. Yeah. Pounding the over. Absolutely taking that one to the counter. Uh, I think you could lose to Florida and still go 10 and 2. Um, I think you could you could lose to Florida and Florida State and and finish 10 and 2. You know, like just they would be so pissed though. <laughs> yeah, they would. Oh, and two to the state of Florida. Well, I guess one and two with Florida and them, but no, but or two and two because South Florida. But yeah, I oh, I really yeah. like I like the dynamics of the schedule. I like where their buys are. Um, I think it's nice having that buy in between that stretch. It's kind of an underrated stretch where they have to play Louisville, Florida State, not Duke, but then Georgia Tech. Two of those games being on the road. Um, yeah, I think uh, if they beat Florida in that week one game. I think they're going to win out, although, and I know Virginia Tech is a tough game, but <clears throat> I think getting them at home, more so not getting them in Blacksburg, I think is a big deal. Um, Cal is going to be an interesting one when they travel, but I I have a lot of faith um, in the talent of this Miami team, overwhelming Cal. Now, that hasn't stopped Miami from losing games in the past with Mario Cristobal there at head coach. <laughs> um, but I, I just, at some point, okay, at some point, you have a team that is overwhelmingly talented with no – now, this is an outsider's perspective, perspective – no visible cultural issues, right? Like you had at some other schools that, you know, didn't achieve what their recruiting rankings said that they were going to achieve. This is a schedule that plays, I think, into their favor, and I am whacking over nine, and you can get that at minus 125 right now. The line's at nine. Yeah, give me the over, man. I I was picking at nine and a half. It don't matter. I'll take that over nine oh, and a half too. I yeah. really I really don't care. I mean, you mentioned they do have some tough games, but this is a tough team. Like this is a this is a program and this is a talented team that should be winning these games and expecting to win every single game on their schedule. I think 12 and 0 is absolutely in the cards. Not to, you know, to, not to pump you guys up too much. But listen, yeah, for everything we talked about over the last X amount of minutes, it it is a damn good team, man. I cannot wait. To, I hope to make the playoffs because damn, I don't know who wants to see Cam Ward and these guys go, especially with how good they are on the offensive and defensive lines. It should be fun. And th- this is where we should be in year three with, with Marcus. Well, I know he's got a lot of hate recently and you know he gets hate for the georgia tech loss and the in-game coaching and whatever it may be but 
The reality is, is they built a really good program here, which is exactly what we thought he was going to do when he got hired in terms of recruiting and talent evaluation and developing a roster. It's just about executing. And I think they have a good coaching staff around him to be able to do so. And it's fun. And I'm glad Miami's back in college football, you know, high expectations and legit talent because the ACC and college football is much better off for it.